Hi, I'm Ashley from Sunny Made, and today we are going to learn how to prep our quilt for quilting. We only have two weeks left this week and next week and then you will have a finished quilt how are things going i'm excited to see your pictures um just head over to instagram tag me at ashley sunny made i would love to see what you're doing with your quilt blocks that you have put together um so we are almost done and then i have to decide what we're going to do next so if you have any ideas about what you would like for me to cover what things you would like to learn please leave them down in the comment section below and i will put them into my rotation i am trying to decide between more learning videos and making whole quilts so we are going to have a fun time okay what do we have going on right now? Right now we have a finished quilt top. You should have a quilt top that is three blocks by three blocks, vertical, horizontal. We put our sashing on it. And last week we did our final border. And now it's time to get it ready to quilt. So, and now it's time to get ready to quilt. Now, a few terminology, and I know we kind of use these rather loosely. However, when you are sewing your top together, that is called piecing. When you put your quilt sandwich together and you're sewing the top, the batting, and the backing together, that is called quilting. So we are going to go over quilting today. But first, we need to learn what we need to do to get our quilt ready to quilt. So we have our quilt top. What you will then need is batting for the middle. Yes, you do need batting. You cannot forget that. Okay? It helps um, make the quilt a blanket, a quilt to make it warm. Okay? And then you need backing. And depending on um, how you're going to end up quilting your quilt depends on how much batting and backing you need. So I'm going to go over three styles today, three options, and then um, we you can get your quilt all prepped. Okay, first style to hooking your front batting and back is tying your quilt this one is not tied this is when you use yarn or some some people use like embroidery thread to um you put the needle down through the fabric back up you tie a knot and you do that all the way around your quilt when you're doing a tied quilt you will put it on a usually you put it on a wooden frame you tack it to the wooden frame um and you just need your backing and batting to be the exact size as your quilt top um tying quilts is super easy though i think when you've put so much work into a quilt top you probably want to make it look a little prettier than tying. However, if it's a baby quilt or something like that, you may want to tie it. And um, so you would need to have access to a quilt frame. Okay, second type is quilting it on your own machine. Now with a smaller quilt like this, you definitely can do that uh you can if it's a bigger quilt but it definitely gets a little tricky because you're trying to keep everything out 
of the way. So what you would need to do with that case is you would have your backing. I would recommend it being two to four inches bigger all the way around than your quilt top. So what you would do is you would put your um, backing on the ground. Then you would put your batting on top of it and make your batting the same size as your backing. And then you would center your quilt top on top of that. Okay, so you need a nice flat surface. This is what I'm actually going to do with this one. So I'm going to lay out my backing, lay out my batting, and then um, put my quilt center it on top. At that point, you need to have a whole bunch of safety pins. And they actually make special safety pins for when you're doing um, your quilt sandwich and they have a bend in the middle. So it makes it easy to push it down through all three layers and back up all three layers. And you're gonna put those safety pins probably four to five inches apart. You need them all over your quilt. And the reason being is it holds it all together as you quilt your quilt. At this point, then you have to decide what kind of design you want to put on your quilt top. This one has loops. I did not do this on my home machine. Um, an easy way to do it on your home machine is you could do straight lines. You could do wavy lines. Or you could even get like a chalk pencil or another writing utensil that will come off your quilt and draw lines on where you want to do it. I have also, in the past, I did um, a Christmas tree skirt and I did that on my home machine and I went around my stars and around the inside of my stars and just kind of followed my seams. So you can decide how you want to do that. Now, a few tips and tricks. When you're trying to sew it on your machine, this is a lot, and this is a small one. This is a lot to put on there. So, I have seen a couple options. You can roll it like this on one side. Say you're working on the middle of your quilt. You can roll it on your other side. And then you would feed it into your machine like this and work on this section. And so then you unroll and roll as you move towards the other side of your quilt. Um, also, when you're working on your home machine, I would recommend starting in the middle of your quilt and working towards the edges. And that just allows everything to stay in place in the middle and then you don't end up things getting all wonky towards the sides and as you start sewing um i'm gonna probably do wavy lines uh i will just do wavy lines pretty much i don't have to make those precise so that's why i pick a wavy line um i can do them an inch three inches a part it doesn't matter um so really, I will start in the middle and I will take my safety pins out as I sew. One of our options for when we put our quilt together is to take it to a long arm. There is a couple options when it comes to long arming. Um, you can box it up and send it off to a long arm. They will have specifications of how big they want your backing, how big they want your batting, but you will send your batting, your backing, and your finished quilt top to the long arm. They will charge you usually by the inch. Um, it's usually one to two cents per inch, per square inch that you send them. And then there's also, how do you want it done? Do you want an edge to edge? Do you want something fancy? Um, so that's your first option. The second option is you can actually do it yourself. This is a long arm machine. This one is actually at my mom's house. So when I come during the summer, I bring several quilts with me and I get them done. As you can see, our 
quilt that we just finished putting together is on the long arm. At your local quilt store, a lot of times they will have long arm machines to rent. Now, when I learned how to long arm, that's exactly what I did. It was a Christmas present from my mom because I didn't have access to hers. Um, and so I paid the fee to take the class. And then the way that my local quilt store does it is there's a punch card and I get 10 hours on the punch card and I can rent time on the machine. So I bring in my backing, I bring in my batting, and I bring in my quilt top and I quilt it myself. Now, like I said, there's two different ways you can do it. If you do an edge to edge, you'll pick out a panto, which is what I have over here. Um, this is the panto that I'm putting on my quilt and I quilt it from this side. If I'm doing kind of a random quilting, which I have never done because I'm a little scared to do it because I'm afraid I'll mess up my quilt top, you will stand on this side of the machine and quilt from that side. The, the classes are usually required before they let you rent out their quilt, their long arm machine. Um, but it's really good to take one because then you know how to load the quilt on the machine, how to quilt it, how to use their machines. And what's actually nice when you rent their quilt, quilt, their long arm is they will put the thread on it for you. They will have the bobbin all made. And if there's a problem with it, they will come help you fix the machine and get it running smoothly. When you're prepping your quilt for a long arm, you're going to actually make the backing bigger than the front. So the way you would figure that out is you would figure out the measurements of your quilt. And then you want to add a four inch um, extension on the backing all the way around. So if we have a four and a half inch quilt like we have here, square you're gonna add four inches and four inches on each side, which is eight inches, which means that your backing should be 48 and a half inches by 48 and a half inches. And that just helps you be able to um, hook it onto the long arm and there's cl clamps on the sides that help um, keep it taut as you go to sew it. Now your batting needs to actually be similar to that size or just slightly smaller. It can be um, 48 inches or it could be, you know, do a three inch um, extra all the way around. Now the thing with uh, batting that you do need to know is you want to make sure that you have high quality batting. This is something I've used recently. It's not exactly high quality. Um, and the way to do that is to give it a stretch test. If it pulls apart, it's starting to pull here, it's not very good quality. And the reason why you want to worry about that is as you use your quilt and you wash your quilt, um, your batting will start to break down. And, and it will stretch and it will bunch up and it will break down. And then you'll have either a lumpy quilt or a not warm quilt and it will just be made of fabric. So make sure that you are paying attention to the type of of batting you're using. I would recommend either an 80-20 or a bamboo. I did recently take a class on all the different types of batting because it's something that I um, didn't have a lot of knowledge about. So I do plan to do a video in the future about it, but right now look for an 80-20 or a bamboo. That Those were the two that I would recommend. The other thing about batting is on the packaging, it'll tell you how far apart you can do your um, stitches. And I'm not talking about stitch length. I'm talking about how far apart on the quilt. A better batting is going to let you do farther apart, so 8 to 10 inches, where a not so good batting is going to be closer to 2 to 4 inches. So that's also another way that you can tell if it's high quality batting or not. Now the last thing is the backing and like I said you want it to be a good four inches all the way around extra um, the tip with piecing 
uh, backing. Now there is a 108 inch wide backing that you can use on a large quilt and then you just buy um, how many yards you need and it's 108, the width of fabric is 108 inches. However, sometimes like on this quilt, 108 inches is going to be kind of ridiculous because this is only 40 inches. So what we would need to do in order to get the 48 inches wide to take it to the long arm, you would have to piece your batting or batting your backing fabric. Um, the recommended is to put a seam horizontal on your quilt instead of vertical. It's just easier to long arm that way. Also, if you have a salvage edge, keep it on the top because that causes it not to stretch as much when you're putting it on the long arm. But when you seam, do the seam across the middle of your backing of your quilt, you want to make sure that you do get all of that salvage off. You don't want it to be stiff and not stretchy there in the middle. Um, other than that, I think that's it for right now, getting, getting your quilt prepped. Figure out how you're going to get it sewn all together and quilted. Are you going to do it on your machine? This is a nice size, just so you really could do that. Are you going to send it off to a long arm? Are you going to go take a class? A class was fun, and I really enjoyed doing that. Okay, next week, we are going to go over binding. We're going to put a binding on our finished quilt, and then you will have a whole quilt, and then we're going to do a giveaway. So make sure you stick around for the next couple weeks and we will do a giveaway. Okay, it's time for show and tell. This week I am working on a fun little pattern. This is the quilt block that you put together. It's called Same Sky by Modernly Morgan. You can find her on Instagram at Modernly Morgan. She has lots of fun different quilts. This is actually one of my favorites. As you put it together, it creates this fun star. When you put four pieces together, I'm using in it an old fat eighth bundle that I bought years ago. It is called Sunday Stroll, I believe. <laughs> yes, it's Sunday Stroll by Bonnie and Camille. I love their fabric. I love all the stuff they put out. Unfortunately, it's only just Camille now. So Bonnie retired. Her mom retired. So this is fun pulling out old fabric got it going putting the different pieces together so that's what i'm working on this week it's kind of slow going but if you want to follow along you can over on instagram again my handle there is ashley underscore sunny made and i hope you have a great week happy sewing mm -hmm.